Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. Today we'll be taking a look at updating our rooted Pixel 3 or Pixel 3 XL to the latest version of Android 10, just released today, the November security update. Uh, for our series of pixels, we do have a few improvements uh, pertaining to the squeeze function for the Google Assistant, as well as hot word detection. So this might be the update for you as well. So what we need to do first and how we're going to update is we'll be using the factory images. And uh, since we don't have access with uh, to TWRP that works on Android 10, we'll have to use uh, Magisk Manager to patch our boot image in order to maintain or retain root after updating. So there are a few precautions that we need to do. We need to ensure that we don't have anything installed on our phone or pretty much any Magisk modules that may affect the updating process, uh, especially something like Active Edge Mod, but I know there's a built-in disabler if it doesn't match the current version that you're on. So I think we can try out and leaving that enabled, but there could be some other modules such as exposed. It may cause your phone to go into a boot loop and I will provide a rescue image down below in the description if that happens to you. But just make sure you have a modest set of modules that hopefully won't interfere with the updating process. So let's head over back to our computer and here's where we need to download a few things. So starting off, we'll need to grab the latest version of the SDK platform tools. And this is just ADB and Fastboot, these programs that we use to communicate with our phone from our computer. So let's download the one for Windows or your associated uh, operating system. And we'll check the version that you have currently installed in case you have one that you've used before. And the next thing we wanna download is the factory image for our Pixel 3 or Pixel 3 XL. So we can go down on the right hand side and select the device that we have. And then scroll down and download the latest factory image, one for November. Click on the blue download link and save this into a folder. Same with the platform tools, just save it somewhere altogether. And of course, we'll be using Magisk to update our phone or patch our boot image rather. And so you probably already have this installed on your phone. So you just need Magisk Manager on your phone. And once you've done that, you should have these two files over here, the factory image and the platform tools. So first thing we'll do is open up the platform tools folder and open that up. And all you need to do is extract the platform tools folder outside just like that, everything like that. And once that is done, we can close this and let's open up the factory image. We'll need to take some things out of that as well. Open up the factory image folder inside, extract the bootloader image and radio images outside just like that. And once you've extracted those things, we need to open up the, or we can close this and we need to open up the image zip file that we just extracted and locate the boot image and extract that outside as well. And once you've done that, we can close the image zip file and now we can head on back to our device. So with this, I'll be using ADB, so the Android debug bridge a lot to use, uh, to copy files to our phone and also take files back outside of our phone. And to do that, you'll need to make sure that you have USB debugging enabled. And if you don't, you need to go to the settings and you'll need to enable the developer options. So head over to system and then advanced, and then you'll need to uh, tap on developer options there. But if you don't have that, you need to go to about phone and then go down to the bottom and tap on the build number seven times. You'll need to enter your screen lock as well. And once you've done that, you should be able to go back into system, advanced, and then open the developer options. Scroll down a little and you just need to enable USB debugging as well, okay? Don't mind me here, I just need to do that to show you something later on. And once you've enabled USB debugging, we can head over back to our computer here and we'll use ADB to push the boot image to our device. So let's do that. Let's bring up a command prompt window here inside our platform tools folder. So head over to the platform tools folder. This is something we need to set up so we can use it later on in this video, as well as a really good reference point for any time you need to use ADB or fastboot. Now, if you've added this to your path environment variable, you don't have to do this, uh, but if you haven't done that, then this is what you need to do. So you need to open up the folder and then go inside the address bar and type in CMD for command prompt. And then that will open up the command prompt window exactly where the platform tools are right here. So we can actually use these programs like fastboot and ADB and so on. So once you have that ready, I'm just going to use my console emulator to do this. It just makes it a lot easier. And I'll just resize a few things. And then you can head back over to where all your other files are. Now inside the command prompt window that you just opened up, uh, what we need to do is type in ADB devices, and this will show 
Well, first off, start the ADB daemon and then show if our device is connected or not. You can see that it says we are unauthorized and that means we just need to accept a prompt on our phone here. So you'll see this thing pop up. Just check always allow from this computer and then tap on allow. And then when you head back to your computer and run the same command again, you can use the up arrow key to do so. You can press enter and then we'll see that our device is connected as a device this time, which is good news. So let's push the boot image, the stock one that we got from our factory image to our phone so we can patch it using Magisk Manager. So we can do that by typing in ADB push, ADB push and then drag in the boot image and then type in forward slash SD card. We'll just copy it to our SD card. Now, if you weren't able to drag the image over onto the command prompt window like that, you can hold shift and right click on the file that you need. And you should see an option called copy as path. Now, if you click on that, and then we'll go back to typing in our command, you can right click on the command prompt window uh, and paste the path of the file that you need if you can't drag it over. Alternatively, since we know that we are in the platform tools folder, we can do two dots and then a backslash for Windows. And then if you start typing in the boot image and press tab, it'll finish it for you. Now the two dots represents the parent directory. So the folder that is above the platform tools, which is the Android folder. And that's where our boot image is located. So that's a quick rundown of other options that you might need to take. But once you've copied the file over to your phone, what we can do here is now head over to Magisk Manager and then go to the main menu and then tap on install for Magisk and then tap on install again. And we need to select the option where it says select and patch a file. Tap on that. And then what we can do here is go over to the three dots and make sure you have tapped on show internal storage. And if you've already done that, you should be able to go to the menu and tap on pixel three for your internal storage and locate the boot image that we just copied over, which is this one. Tap on that and Magisk will start downloading itself or the latest version. And then it'll proceed to install itself into that boot image that you have provided. So we'll give this a few seconds for it to download and patch our image. And then after that, we'll be able to continue updating our phone. Okay, we're done now patching the boot image. And if you experienced a crash uh, when trying to do this, I recommend unhiding Magisk Manager inside Magisk Manager settings. I had emojis in my name and I was thinking maybe that's the cause of it. So the file will be located in our downloads folder under the name of Magisk underscore patched. So with that information, we can go back to our computer and pull that file from that location into our computer where we are. So let's do that using ADB pull. So the opposite of push, and then we provide the location of where the file is on our phone. So a shortcut is forward slash SD card, forward slash, and then type in the word download with a capital D and then magisk underscore patched dot IMG. And then leave a space after that and then type in two dots. Uh, remember how I mentioned that two dots represents the parent directory. So we should see it uh, in line with everything else. So let's hit enter. And that seems to have worked. And you can see the patched image arrive in our Android folder. Once you have that done, we can now reboot our phone into the bootloader where we'll finish up updating, where we can actually flash the factory image. So before this, I recommend that you uh, back up anything that you need, any important data, because there is a potential that your phone uh, might require a factory reset after for whatever reason, or it just doesn't boot up. So I recommend that you make a backup just before you reboot and do the update as usual. And once you've done that, let's reboot our phone into the bootloader so we can type in ADB reboot and then space and then type in the word bootloader and hit enter. Alternatively, you can turn off your device and hold the power and volume down buttons together until your phone boots into the bootloader. Okay, so once we're in the bootloader, let's check our fastboot executable version. So type in fastboot double dash version and if your fastboot version is much less than 29.0.5, the lowest I go or would go is probably version 29. And if yours doesn't say anything at all, or it says that's an unknown command or something along the lines of that, uh, that means you're running a super outdated version of fastboot and you should get the new ones immediately. So as long as you got the latest version or something very close to it, we can now go ahead and 
flash the update. So let's start off with updating the bootloader. So we can type in fastboot flash bootloader. Leave a space after the word bootloader and drag in the bootloader image. Remember you can use that other tricks that I've mentioned before if you can't drag and drop. And once you've updated the bootloader, let's reboot our phone into the bootloader again for it to take effect. So let's type in fastboot reboot dash bootloader and hit enter. Alrighty, so once we've done that, let's update the baseband or radio image. So let's type in fastboot flash radio. Leave a space after radio and drag in the radio image and hit enter. Okay, now that's done. We'll do the same thing and reboot our phone into the bootloader. Fastboot reboot bootloader. So let's update our phone with the images now. So we can do that by typing in fastboot double dash skip dash reboot. Then type in the word update, leave a space after update and drag in the image file or the image zip file. And that'll proceed to extract all the files to our computer and then slowly flash the files one by one. Now what that double dash skip dash reboot flag does is pre uh, prevent the phone from rebooting automatically afterwards because we still need to flash the patched boot image so we can keep root access on our phone. So that's why we don't let it restart by itself. Okay, so we've finished flashing the update image. Now you see we're in this new fastboot D mode and um, I'm just gonna reboot itself back into the bootloader so we can continue its thing. So we can use fastboot here. So let's type in fastboot reboot dash bootloader and hit enter. And we should be back in the regular bootloader. And this is where we'll flash our patched magisk image or magisk patched image. So let's type in fastboot flash boot drag in the patched image and hit enter. And once that is okay, feel free to restart your device. So I'm gonna type in fastboot, reboot, hit enter, and our phone should boot into Android. Provided that nothing goes wrong or anything like that, we should be able to boot in pretty quickly. So let's see if we need to do anything special here. Okay, it looks like we may be stuck at the Google logo, so let's try and force our phone to turn off so we can hold the volume down button and power button together just until the screen turns off and we'll see if we can try booting it up once more. Okay. Okay, so our phone's booted up. Took a little while and everything is still intact, which is always a good sign. There we go. Magisk Manager is still here. So this is our patched one, or our hidden Magisk Manager. Make sure there's no weird duplicates. It seems to be all right. Let's see what kind of modules we have here. And the Active Edge mod has disabled itself, which is nice. Alrighty, so it looks like we are updated and ready to go. That's just finishing the system update, but as you can see, we're still rooted with all our data intact, which is awesome. So thanks for watching guys. Um, if you have any other questions, feel free to leave it down below in the comments section, or even better yet, join us on Discord. I'll have a link to that down below as well. Uh, just makes it a lot easier to carry on communications because I don't get notifications for replies on YouTube comments, which is a bit annoying. But anyways, thanks for watching once again, and as always, happy flashing.